Here's a question for you. If you keep on doing what you're doing, you'll keep on getting what you're getting. Do you agree? Yes. Good. Let me tell you a story. This is me and my four-year-old. He was three at the time last summer. I was in Lebanon. I went to play tennis. I went to show him a tennis game. This is what I used to play growing up. And I said deep inside of me, will he actually enjoy this game? So he actually was with me, and you can see there was a, a, an audience, there was a game happening behind me, and, and, and Emmanuel was really enjoying watching that. And deep inside, I was like, that is a future for him in tennis. <laughs> now, the people behind is the story where I'm going to take it. So this lady in red, you can see she has a beautiful form for a forehand. And I saw them practice warm up, and she had a forehand, she had a beautiful backhand, she would go and slice, and, and I'm thinking, this is going to be a nice tennis game, until she started playing the game. And upon making the first serve, she had a fault, and then she did the second serve, and she had a double fault, and this is where her inner voice came out and said, don't start. At the loud voice, I'm sitting in the audience, I'm thinking, what is she talking about? Don't start. Okay, fine. Just focus on what you want versus what you don't want. And she did it again and again, and of course, she ended up losing because of her negative inner self-talk. Now, I'm sharing the story because we're not playing tennis in here, but something dawned to me. And what dawned to me is that this lady had everything going for her. She could hit the ball from the, back, from the back line. She could hit the ball. She could go and spin it. But if she could not do this one thing, it didn't really matter. And what is that one thing? Is to get the ball over. And selling in today's world is so different than selling just three, four years ago. Not to mention selling beginning of the year. Today in sales professionals, I'll put on a list here of a bunch of different ideas, whether it's making choices, knowing where to focus. You want to sell for profits or you want to sell for volume? Do you want to learn a bit about territory planning? You want to build rapport? You want to become better at leading and coaching your team, overcoming objections, closing the deals, fueling people growth, having that growth mindset. All these things are working inside, which is the one that if you're not good at, you could be good at everything except having a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And your inner self-talk is, they're not going to buy. They always will buy the cheapest. Are you with me? So what is it about this? See, you got to decide. The world that we knew, there are three constants in life. Constant number one is change. We used to talk about something called a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and uh, ambiguous. Today, forget VUCA. It's called BANI. It's brittle. Things can break overnight. Things can, uh, are anxious. Forget uncertain. We're anxious about the future. What's going to happen with the price of this, price of that? What's the next shipment coming in? What is the, I mean, it's just completely different. We talk about <laughs> complex, now it's completely non-linear. We don't know what's happening from what direction is coming at us. Whether it's Corona, whether it's Morona, whether it's whatever, right? It's a reality. I hope I'm not saying something that is new to you. If you are, where have you been the last couple of years? <laughs> Right? And then this um, ambiguous becomes incomprehensible. We really don't know what the future brings. In 2020, when the, when the downturn happened, I had a webinar. There's about 200 people in a webinar online. It was April 2022. And I asked them one question. You might not be able to see it. It's small. It says, how long do you think the current situation will last? Back at the time, I was talking about Corona, of course. Right? I want all of you to pick up your phones, and I want all of you to scan this code. And there's a question. Do you see the question? Yes. Great. Can you answer? So how long do you think the current situation will last? Don't, 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 don't change it yet. Just keep the other one so we don't give away the answer. Okay? <laughs> Just go back. Excellent. Give people the QR code. How long do you think? Now, what current situation? Whichever one you want. 
Whatever is going on, whatever the challenges that you could be facing, just pick whatever it is from your side. And that's not me saying it, but if I were to look, there's 123 respondents in here, about a hundred of you, so maybe two-thirds are, are saying, you know what, this level of uncertainty is here to stay. This is your vote, it's not mine. I probably would have answered three to four. I'm very optimistic. I want this thing to change. I want things to kind of uh, go back to the way it were even better because of all the things we've learned. So how long the situation would last? You see, change has always happened throughout history, whether it was the first industrial revolution, the next industrial revolution, the third industrial revolution, and the current revolution that's happening throughout the world. Now, the thing about these different stages is every stage that has been an evolution in knowledge and capability, imagine showing up at the world of AI, at the world of artificial intelligence, of automation, of robotics. Imagine being in this world today still using techniques from the year right before COVID. COVID has brought to surface a lot of the imperfection and has accelerated change. It has, you know, it has forced us to learn how to do things better faster, quicker. So you've all have adapted, yet I want to ask you, is there more? That is not for me to answer, that is for you to answer. What happens if you're in the current day and age, but you're using techniques from a few ages ago? You've heard of a company called Blockbuster. Who likes movies? Anyone likes movies? Do you remember the days of Blockbuster? Come on, you're not that old. You know, you're not that young, I mean. Yeah, do you remember Blockbuster? We used to go, that, that experience to go to the store, check out the movies, come back, bring it, but then ending, have, ending up having to go and pay like late fees and all that stuff, <laughs> you know? In the early, to mid, mid 2000s, the CEO of Blockbuster went to the board and said, guys, there is this Netflix dudes, they're coming, they're giving unlimited membership and they were sending DVDs at the time and, and then they started streaming and, and he told them, you know, there is, there is a risk, let's evolve. You know what they told him, the one of the board members? No, 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 we're not interested in that model because we're making about 15% of our earnings from late fees. Late fees. How many of you love late fees? The moment you could avoid them, the moment I could avoid them, Switched over. Anyway, altogether, I dropped down the number of hours spent watching entertainment versus education. That's another thing we're going to talk about. So it's about showing up and realizing that you got to become the agent of change in what you're going to get out of today. Number two, competition is constant. I cannot <laughs> explain this one, right? Do you think, can you remember competition in your business just three years ago, 2019? Can you visualize that? Just say I, so I have an idea. Exactly. Now, look at what it is today in your mind. Can you visualize that? Say I. Now, think about the next two years. Do you think competition will be less? Or do you think your competition will be more? If it's more, if you agree with more, say I. So you can see, <laughs> here, here I got you saying something, you know. This is one of the challenges that is out there. Yes, competition is constant. And last but not least, opportunities also will become constant. See, because of technology, because of change, there is gonna be new opportunities out there. Some of you have evolved. If you're in the Horeca business, I know many of you have now a platform that sells directly to consumers. That's a brand new channel that wasn't available, or wasn't even thought of because you thought it was a complex thing to do, but it was the only thing to do when the lockdown happened, right? There was no other way of doing it. So now I ask the question again, if you keep on doing what you're currently doing, will you keep on getting what you're getting? Do you see why I am calling this meeting Win 2022? Learn to sell in the year of disruption. You are the lucky people sitting in this room. All other companies ignored my call they said, we are too busy, we're on vacation. Actually, where is uh, Renny? Is Renny in the room? Renny, you delayed your vacation, my friend. You said, Dramas, I'm going on the 21st, but I'll go on the 22nd. I'm going to come and bring my team with me, man. Great decision. Great decision. <clears throat> I think it's a great decision for all of you. Let's give all of you a hand for being here today. <clears throat> Sales teams 
are having to navigate political and social and economic changes. What we're seeing is global COVID breakdowns, and they're not going away, unfortunately. Uh, international COVID, re, re, it's, it's reopening, war in Europe, unfortunately, all have dramatically skewed the global supply chain and demand. Inflation has increased prices and are now at levels that have not been seen. Inflation has not been seen that bad since 1981. See, what's been driving this? Up until 2020, if you, can, if you notice, the price of oil has dropped. At one point in time, before the lockdown or during the lockdown, the price of oil was negative 40 bucks. So people, uh, companies would pay us to buy the gold from them, to buy the gold, to buy the, the black gold from them. Today, where are things going? The idea of a highly, uh, you know, a hundred plus, two hundred dollar barrel of oil is a possibility. I hope it doesn't happen though. Uh, fertilizers, many of the food that we sell, many of the things that we eat to feed, to grow, the fertilizers has gone up 330%. Well, guess what? This has implications. Lithium, whatever is powering your phones, whatever is powering your laptops, whatever is powering up all these EVs that are about electric vehicles that are about to hit the road. 2023 is going to be a year where there is at least 15 to 20 EV models being launched throughout our, uh, our markets. BMW, Nissan, Toyota, all are coming in with that. Logistic prices have gone up 435% and we're seeing this like a yo-yo effect going up and down, up and down, up and down. See, what has this meant to business and sales industries? See, profit margins have suffered. They are under great pressures, especially when adjusted against inflation. So even if you are selling the same as you did last year, you're achieving a certain amount of growth. When you take away 9.1% of inflation, we definitely have a challenge. Sales teams must negotiate aggressively with both suppliers and end consumers. Suppliers, hey man, you know, give me a break. How can I go to my customers and ask for a price increase of that much? But suppliers are saying, man, how can you expect me to give you the same product, the same quality, the same service for anything less than this much? The consumer spending habits are changing. You see, because salaries are not rising at that same level, people now, when they're going to the supermarkets, uh, they're looking at things and they're seeing, do I buy the same thing I used to buy before or do I maybe make some adjustments? If I don't see a very clear reason to buy a better, more expensive product, guess what? I'm going for a cheaper economical product. Not that it's bad, but before I saw I wanted to get these nice products, but today we have an entire chain of supermarket called Viva. If you've not been there, they sell nothing branded. It's all local Viva stuff. Why? Because they are a fighter brand. They are, they are offering this, this simple idea for consumers. Now, I want you to think of the savings you have in your bank account right now. Hopefully, that's a nice uh, picture in your mind. Think of the savings. So close your eyes. Think of that. Don't tell me the number. I don't want to know the number, but just think of that. Now, open your eyes. If you had 100000 or if you have $100,000 in the bank, at 9% interest compounded over seven years, 50% of your wealth will be gone. 50%, and, and you have the graph that shows you more. This is not me saying it. This is the laws of economics, the laws of finance. See, inflation steals value of purchasing power, and in just seven years, you see the impact of that. Now, unfortunately, I know when I was leading the Unilever team, the Unilever business, you know, there was this question, do I give all this detail to my team, or I just let them go and sell? You know what I mean. You just kind of let them go and sell. But they come back with all the stuff. They come back and they are facing objection after objection. And, and man, so teams aren't always given the big picture. Today, we need to change that. Today, if you're a sales executive, if you are dealing directly with customers, you need to understand a little bit about what's happening in the economy because this is going to differentiate you from the other salespeople that are out there. So we wanna, I want to empower you to give you the big picture outlook. Inflation, there is high inflation and it's been accelerating and it's 
It's here to stay. It's not me saying it. It's what the uh, IMF and many other resources are showing that inflation is here. Commodity and supply chains will remain expensive. Experts are saying that up until 2026, inflation will be here. And, you know, there are some, some global, uh, global uh, policies that are causing this to happen. And when these global politicians figure it out and then make some adjustments and then let drive, you can just go on the internet and get updated with what is going on. There is a new concept out there called stagflation. How many of you have heard of the word inflation? I think we've, we've clearly described that. Now, what is, what is stagnation? Stagnation is when three things are happening. Number one, GDP of a country, which is the output, is going down. Uh, number two, unemployment is rising. And of course, demand for goods are decreasing. That slows down an economy. And that's what we're seeing today. Stagflation is happening. It starts in North America, and it finds its way to make its way over here. Maybe it's not yet fully, fully ready, but it's, it's definitely happening. Interest rates are rising, and so forth and so on. Um, there is one comment I'm going to make here. Because principal organizations are selling through distributors, and when sales slow down, guess what? They will start looking at other alternatives. When I was in Unilever, we realized that putting oral eggs in one basket with one distributor in 2009, right, was not going to make it successful for us. So we really had to relook at our route to market. We needed to look at different types of distributors that can allow us to have better reach, better penetration. So these conversations are coming if they haven't been here yet. Competitors are scrambling for market share and they will be discounting their products. Have you seen clients and discounts as it becoming a little bit more cutthroat in your market? You know what I'm talking about. Now, where there is risk, there is also opportunity. Now, this part of the world is still projected to have a 5% GDP growth for this year, right? Uh, so we are an oil nation. We are better positioned than many of the others. So there is still money coming in, is being pumped into the economy. However, what is going to happen is for next year projections, you can see are going from 5 to 3%. Now, Again, uh, this is a projection. It could happen, it could not happen. But if someone is saying it's going to be cloudy, do you do the weather forecast? Do you look at the weather forecast? How is it going to look like tomorrow? What's the humidity? Well, this is what this is. It's like a sales weather forecast. You can see what is the GDP growth. And if you look at the UE, I know it's too small. I'll give you the slides later. But one of the things you're going to realize is that there is a potential dip coming. Now, that potential dip reminds me of 2008 and 2009. How many of you were in Dubai in 2008, 2009? Raise your hands, really, so, okay, so we can see. I remember when in July, August, the whole world economy collapsed. In the UAE, we were still going strong. We were still going strong. strong. September, October, November, December, people were partying, and then January hit. And then what happened? If you remember, hotel occupancy went down drastically, 50%. Right? We were told in this part of the world, go grow sales by 50% because we're not growing it elsewhere, and I had 50% occupancy, so how am I going to do that? Well, that's another story. I'll talk about it later. But see, what's happening? I'm going to give you this little advice. Today, it's the calm before the storm. They say, when is the best time to build a roof? Before it rains or when it starts raining? You are the luckiest 200 people sitting in the UAE market right now. You are becoming aware. You know what they say, the mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's open. Once the mind is open, it never regains back its original shape. I want to empower you to leave here and become best at what you do. For you and your businesses to grow and to thrive and together, we are the winners that stay here. Unfortunately, in selling, if you come in number two, there, there is zero money in it for us. Doesn't mean I don't care about others, but I do care about me becoming better, me becoming ready. I, I need to make sure that I cover, I build my roof, and this is what today is all about. Time to capture more market share is now. This is the time to, you know, someone said, I spoke with Ahmed yesterday, he said, summer is the best time to learn. It's a little bit quiet, and man, there is no better time <clears throat> than to actually be here and getting this knowledge coming to you firsthand. Right, Ahmed? Absolutely. So, how to thrive in a stagflation? Avoid selling for volume. Avoid discounting. And start thinking about selling for profits. All of your products, some are more profitable than others. Are you with me? 
The Blue Shirt team, we got, we got the products that are customized and we got the standard products and we know the standards is better for the customer. And guess what? It's also better for us, right? So when you identify which are the winning horses, which are the products that are more profitable, and now the question is, people say, I don't know how to sell that. Well, this is what today is about. Get better at learning how to sell this value. No one is going to do it for you. I know I do. I know I don't do. I don't know I don't do. I did not know I did not know. Therefore, I don't do. And as such, you want to make sure that your rate of sale and growth beats inflation. So, in other words, you see this line going, that's 9%. You want to be above the 9 Whatever you do, your sales have got to increase more than 9% because that is inflation. It's eroding whatever sales you're doing. And how do we keep everything in? Today is going to be great, but there is something, there is a reality. There is something called the forgetfulness curve. And what that says is you will forget 50% of what you hear today, by tomorrow, same time. It's going to be gone. 50% will be gone. Then why are you here? By the end of seven days, you'll forget 90%. Unless you do the following. And what you can see here, what Alan was talking about, this curve that's going down, there is something called first review. Do you see the first review? At the first review, your knowledge goes back, tops up. And then it starts fading away. Second review. But every time it fades, it fades less and less. The repetition is the mother of all learning. You're going to be invited after this to something called... How many of you attended the sales excellence talk last on the 14th of July? Raise your hands. There was about 50 people. Raise your hand. Let us know who you are. Let's give those people a hand because they got the invitation. They are here to learn. They want to make things happen. But I'm going to ask the question again. Who's going to attend the next one coming in two weeks? Right? And, and it's, not an, it's an option. I cannot force you. You can lead a horse to water, but you cannot manage them to drink. It's going to get an invitation, and you're going to be tempted to put a meeting there. Man, you'll be making the biggest mistake ever. Because you're going to get value today, and you're going to keep on relearning this stuff and getting this thing. The other thing you're going to get is something called the Sales Coach app. How many of you have received an email with some stuff? And you're wondering, what is that? We'll then make sure to download this, log in in the break with your username and password, and then press go and start reading the questions. You can answer, but don't press submit. These are the questions that are going to be coming out slowly but surely. This is the Sales Excellence Talks every week until the end of this year. And last but not least, when there is a button that says capture success stories, you can tell us, Ramis, I've, I've used one of your ideas and I've made a sale. I'll get notified. We'll have conversations. And you know what? When you start teaching what you do, what you've done to others, you start mastering your game.